In this tutorial, we will learn how to set up a Spring Boot app with Spring Security from the scratch that connects to an LDAP server for authentication. Spring Security has authentication providers that kind of come out of the box for uh, connecting and working with LDAP. So it's actually super easy to set this up. Let me show you. If you guys don't know what LDAP is, here is the Wikipedia page. LDAP stands for Lightweight Directory Access Protocol. It is a protocol for accessing and maintaining directory information over a network. This can be used for any kind of hierarchical directory information, but the typical and the most common use case for LDAP is to store organizational information. A typical organization has departments and managers and people reporting to other people. So it's kind of like a tree of information and LDAP is perfect for that. So typically people use LDAP to maintain that information of the organization and also to maintain user information and help with authentication and authorization. You can imagine an organization with a bunch of people all having their own information inside LDAP and then LDAP acts as a way for those people to authenticate and authorize. And anytime somebody authenticates, the system checks with LDAP to see if this is a valid user and if that person has the required rights and credentials and all those things, right? So it's kind of think of it as a directory for users to authenticate and authorize against, in addition to a bunch of other things like providing user information and all that. In the context of what we are doing now with Spring Security, we want our Spring Security application to connect to the LDAP server, which is gonna be the server which contains all this information in order to identify a user. Say somebody's trying to enter with the user ID and a password, our Spring Security app contacts the LDAP server to get that user information and authenticate against LDAP. This is actually super easy with Spring Security because Spring Security has some out-of-the-box classes which know how to connect to LDAP. So all you need to do is configure those out-of-the-box classes to work with LDAP. So let's start by creating a simple Spring Boot project. I'm gonna create a Spring Boot project at Spring Initializer. My group name is com.javabrains and my artifact ID is Spring Security LDAP. I'm going to create a couple of dependencies here. I'm gonna create the Spring Web dependency, which is basically what tells this application that it's a web application, so you get all the Spring MVC dependencies added. The second dependency I'm gonna add is a Spring Security dependency, so this is something that we are working with right now, so I'm gonna add these two. There are a few more dependencies that we need to add, so we're gonna do that after we download this project and open it in IntelliJ. And now here's my project open in IntelliJ. There is one class file, which is the main class file with the main method. I can run this to start the application, but let's set up LDAP first. In order to write an application that connects with LDAP, we need an LDAP server. There are a bunch of different ways in which we can approach this. You can connect to an existing LDAP server, but for the sake of this tutorial and to make it more self-sufficient, we are gonna be running our own dev instance of an open source LDAP server. This LDAP server is gonna be running on our machines. It's gonna hold all the information in memory. So it's not something that you wanna use for a real world application, but for development purposes, it'll do. And when we build an application that connects to this uh, local LDAP server, the thing that you're gonna be building can be easily pointed to a real LDAP server and then it's still gonna work the same way. So I'm gonna be doing that by going to my palm.xml and creating a couple more dependencies here. So just about the test dependencies, so the first dependency I'm gonna add is something called unbound ID, all right? So unbound ID is an open source implementation of the LDAP server. And what I'm using as a dependency here is the unbound ID LDAP SDK. So this is what's gonna set up a local instance of LDAP for us to use. Next, I'm gonna throw in a couple more dependencies here. The first one is Spring LDAP Core. Spring LDAP Core is a Spring integration library that works with LDAP. I'm also adding a Spring Security LDAP, which basically helps Spring Security integrate with LDAP. So you have a couple of dependencies here, which help both Spring and Spring Security to work with LDAP. All right, now I'm gonna save this and have uh, the IDE import these uh, libraries and add them to the class path. Now this 
ensures that we have a local instance of LDAP running, but then we also need to add some users to it, right? We need to seed it with a bunch of users. The way to configure the local instance of LDAP is by going to the application properties file, I'll go here. Uh, since it's a blank project, this comes up with an empty application properties. There are a couple of properties that I need to add here to tell this local LDAP instance what to do. The first property I'm gonna add is the spring LDAP embedded dot port. I'm gonna set the port number for where this embedded LDAP instance needs to run, this local LDAP instance needs to run. The second property that I'm gonna add is a reference to the file which contains the seeded data. Just like you have a way for you to seed your databases when you're using an embedded database with Spring Boot, you have an opportunity to seed your LDAP instance when you're running an embedded LDAP instance. And the way to do that is by pointing it to a file which contains the data that you need to see to LDAP. So I'm gonna point it to this particular file here. The name of the property is spring LDAP embedded.ldif, and I'm pointing it to a file called ldap-data.ldif, and I'm having it available in the class path. Now what is LDIF? LDIF stands for LDAP Data Interchange Format. This is basically the syntax for working with LDAP. You can kind of think of it as an equivalent to SQL. What it does is it lets you represent in a text format what's the data, what's the tree structure, the hierarchy of data that you wanna save in your LDAP instance. Now what you can do now is have this file name, LDAP data.ldif. I'm gonna save it anywhere in the class path. I'll do it in the SRC main resources because this is a resource after all. I'm gonna create a new file. And here I can add the data in LDIF format. And since I have given this property to Spring, it's gonna look at the data and it's gonna populate our local instance. This LDIF syntax is a little bit verbose. So rather than typing it in, I'm just gonna get some LDIF code from online and then I'm just gonna paste it here. And actually the resource I'm gonna use is our very own Spring security guide that is uh, uh, authenticating LDAP guide on spring.io, which talks about how to authenticate a user with, with LDAP. This is exactly what we are learning here. So in this guide, there is some LDIF syntax provided. All right, so if I scroll to the bottom here, uh, there is this section which says setting up user data. All right, so this has a bunch of LDIF syntax. You notice here, this is what LDIF syntax looks like. All right, so I'm just gonna copy this and I'm going to paste it into my local LDIF file. You don't actually have to read through and understand, but at a very high level, I'm gonna tell you what this is all about. All right. So the way to read something like this, let's, let's pick this one, right? So this is an organizational unit, right? The object class is organizational unit. Or you can look at other instances which represent people. So here is one which represents a person. So you have uh, org spring framework, organization unit is people and then it has a unique ID called Ben, and then this represents a person called Ben Alex. And you have the UID Ben again, and here is the user's password encoded in SHA format, all right? SHA is not usually a recommended format for encoding passwords in general, but this is, I think, the only thing that works with LDAP. So you have the encoded password here, you have the user's name, and then the user's ID, all right? So this is one entry in our LDAP instance. There is a bunch more, but we don't have to worry about that. What we need to do is allow people to be able to authenticate based on this data. So what we wanna do is build our Spring Security app to look at the LDAP instance that we're gonna seed with this data so that when somebody enters the user ID Ben and then the password, whatever is the unencoded version of this password, our Spring Security app should be able to authenticate the user Ben, all right? So this is what we are going to do. The third and the final property that I need to add to the application properties file to configure the embedded LDAP is this base DN property. This is what tells our embedded LDAP what the root node is. You can think of this as a hierarchy, like a tree, and then this is a way for you to configure what your root node should be. The way to read this value, DC equals spring framework, DC equals arg, this is actually read the other way around, right? So it's arg at the top and spring framework below it. So the root node is arg, and then spring framework is a node below it. 
and everything else that you're configuring in your embedded uh, LDAP is gonna be below this, all right? So this is what maps to the DC value that you see here for each of these nodes, which says uh, DC equals spring framework, comma DC equals arg, right? So this is what tells uh, LDAP that all these nodes are below the root node that you have specified in the application or properties. The one thing you should note is that these values, spring framework and arg, don't carry any significance here. This could be foo or bar or whatever else. As long as you have the same root node specified in your uh, LDIF file, it works exactly the same. Uh, this value is spring framework and arg because we've pulled it out of the spring.io guides and this happens to be the value that they've used. This could easily be anything else. It has nothing to do with the fact that we are using spring here. And now we have, for these steps, an embedded LDAP running, and then you have seeded it with some stuff. Now the next step is to actually tell spring security what to do when somebody is trying to authenticate. I am going to do that, but before I do that, I'm gonna create an API that's useful to verify authentication. I'm going to create a resource, I'm gonna call this home resource, and what this is gonna do is expose a simple API that I can use for verifying authentication. I'm going to paste this over here, and uh, this is a REST controller. It just has one uh, method at the root, which returns a simple piece of text. This is something that we want to authenticate. All right. Okay, now how do I tell Spring Security to connect to LDAP and use it for authentication? I do that by configuring Spring Security. The way to configure Spring Security is by creating a class which extends Web Security Configurer Adapter. If you're not sure what that is, check out this tutorial which tells you exactly what that is. Now I'm going to extend Web Security Configurer Adapter, and when I do this, I will need to override a couple of methods. This gives me an opportunity to access some of the core Spring Security objects and then tell it what to do. The first thing I'm gonna do is the authorization piece because this is not something very specific to what we are working on. Basically what I'm doing with this authorization, I'm configuring HTTP security to say authorize any request and make sure that any request is fully authenticated. Of course, form login is the default. This is not the interesting part. The interesting part is the authentication piece. How do I tell Spring Security to authenticate with LDAP? The way to configure authentication is by using the configure which takes in an authentication manager builder, all right? So this is where I can configure the authentication. So I can do auth dot, and then depending on the type of authentication that I need to do, I need to choose the right provider. There are a bunch of authentication mechanisms that Spring Security provides by default. So you, you can do JDBC authentication to connect to JDBC database source by default. You can do in-memory authentication, which connects to in-memory data source. If you were to do any of these data sources, if you were to authenticate against any of these sources, you don't have to do much. You just have to configure it and tell it what to do. So in this case, you see there is an LDAP authentication. So LDAP support comes out of the box with Spring Security, so you don't have to create your own in custom classes. You just have to access this and tell it what to do. There are a bunch of configurations that you need to do over here. What I'm gonna do is paste this configuration here and I'm gonna walk you through this starting with the user DN pattern. So DN stands for distinguished name, which is basically a way in which the user information is stored in LDIF format. So let me show you this. If you go to the LDIF format and look at uh, our user, Ben, you can see that the DN format looks something like this. You have the user ID equals, and then you have the organization unit as people. That's actually what you are telling Spring Security, you're saying, okay, this is where my user information is. When somebody tries to authenticate, put that user information over here, you see this? Curly braces zero is where it needs to plug that user information in order to find the user from LDAP and then compare it to authenticate, all right? So this is what the DN pattern is. And then here I'm saying that the space, the organization unit that I need to search for is groups. The URL, which is where the LDAP server is hosted, this is localhost 8389, which is the same port as what we have asked our local instance to be running on. So this is going to connect to that particular location. And then of course, 
using the same domain component, org spring framework, which is at the top level. Once it's connected, you do password compare, and then I'm gonna supply a password encoder, which is the SHA encoder, all right? So there is this class called LDAP SHA password encoder. This is deprecated because again, like I said, this is not something that is recommended for production use. Uh, and then you have the password attribute, which is the user password, which is basically where that password is stored. So if you go to Ben here again, the password attribute is user password. So essentially, without going into a lot of details, what we're doing here is telling Spring Security how our LDAP data is structured, right? We are giving it pointers to where all the different things are. We are telling it where the user ID is, what's the organization structure, where it should be looking in the hierarchy, what's the LDAP server itself, and then what's the password encoder, and then where to look up the password. So essentially, we are configuring an existing LDAP authentication mechanism, and then Spring Security says, okay, I have all the information I need. When somebody's trying to authenticate, I'm gonna query this LDAP instance, get the user information, and then compare the password, and then allow or disallow any particular authentication attempt. Now, before we actually run this thing, I have to make sure I have enable web security on this class so that this is in the radar for Spring Security and it's gonna be plugging in these values by calling these methods. And now, believe it or not, we are good to go. I'm going to run the server here. So this is gonna run the embedded LDAP server and our Spring Security application. I'm gonna to go to localhost8080 slash login. I have the user ID, which is Ben. I have no idea what the password is because the password is in SHA encoded format. Well, we just have to depend on the tutorial to tell us. So I believe there is the password entered over here, Ben's password, all right? Now I'm gonna use this and we are in. To recap, what we've done in this tutorial is created a Spring Boot application from scratch. We added a local LDAP instance and had it running. We seeded it with data by using this LDIF file with a bunch of information that we borrowed conveniently from the internet. And then we used the security configuration class, which extends the web security configure adapter to configure the authentication. The authentication is where we tell Spring Security to use LDAP authentication and give it some information about how our LDAP data is structured. Now this was using Spring Security with LDAP. In the next video, we're gonna talk about another interesting technology, which is becoming very popular these days, especially in the context of uh, securing microservices, which is using something called JWT or JSON Web Tokens. We learn how you can use Spring Security and your Spring Boot applications and have them authorized with JWT in this next tutorial. Check that out and I'll see you there.